<laughs> Welcome to the Safe. Effortless English Show. The show that teaches you to speak English powerfully and confidently. Our topic today, true education, elite, elite education, top 1% education. What is it? How do you get it? How can you create that for yourself, for your children? Today we're going to listen to a video from one of my favorite teachers, Mr. John Taylor Gatto. I have done shows about Mr. Gatto before. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, the audio on this video is not so good. The sound on the video is so-so, not great, but it's such a great topic that I want to play at least a few parts of it and then discuss this topic. Again, returning to this idea of true education, real education, elite education. See, the topic of this show today and the John Taylor Gatto video is the 14 principles of elite private schools. Elite private schools. What are elite private schools? These are the schools where billionaires' children go. Okay, not government schools, not even normal private schools where normal kids or even middle class kids might go, right? Because in some countries, such as the United States, there are a lot of private schools that are for, I'd say, you know, middle class families. But that's not what John Taylor Gatto is talking about. So, you know, he was a great teacher. He was the number one teacher in New York in the public schools. But then after that, he has written about education, spoken to lots of educators, researched, and he studied the elite, the top, 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 0.1% of schools, the super, 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 super rich private schools, right? These are the schools where the Rothschild family sends their children, the Rockefeller family, the Warburg family, these big banking families that control our world and control our government. Governments. They control the banks. So this is the top of the top of the top. These are the super elite private schools. What do they teach their children? Are their schools the same as all the other schools? Hmm? Are, they, are their schools the same as the schools we go to? The public schools and the middle class private schools? They're not. They're very, very, very different. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting that the, the richest families in the world have a very different education system for their own children? Hmm? Interesting, huh? See, they're training their own, own children to be in the top 0.1%. They're training their own children to be leaders, to be rich and to manage large amounts of money. They're training their own children to have power and influence and tremendous freedom and massive success. To have massive power over themselves and other people. That's what they're training their children for, but not your children. No, no, no. Your children... Our children, the normal, regular people, ah, oh, they're teaching us very different things. In our schools, in our public schools, in our private middle class schools, they're teaching us to be obedient. They're teaching us to be stupid, to be slaves. It's very different. So it's very interesting, this video, he talks about what are the super elite teaching their children? What are their schools like? Let's listen. He has 14 points. I'm not going to play all of these because I said... As I said, the vid the audio, the sound is not so good. I'll play a few of them from John Taylor Gatto, and then I'll discuss the rest myself. So let's listen to number one. What's the first principle? The first thing the super elite schools teach children. Here we go. 14 themes. The first of these themes is that no good kid should graduate without a theory of human nature. What makes people tick? What buttons do you press to get the results from your fellow man and woman that you want? Okay, so principle number one, they teach 
a theory of human nature. A theory of human nature. For what purpose? Basically, persuasion. Right? Uh, how do people think? How do humans think and act? And how do you change people's behavior? How do you get people to do what you want them to do? Right? How do you influence people? How do you control people? How do you persuade people? Right? That's, I mean, basically, it's, it's leadership. But understanding human nature for the purpose of leadership. Principle number one of these elite schools. You don't learn this in normal schools. Absolutely not. And how do they learn? Let's listen a little more about point number one. And where does the fund of lore come from? Not from psychology, not even in a small way. The fund of lore about human nature comes from history, philosophy, theology, that's a curse word, isn't it, in public schooling, literature, and law. Oh, now this is interesting. He says that the, elite, the super elite, they do not learn human nature. They do not learn it from psychology. They learn it from history, true history, not the fake history they teach in textbooks in normal schools. No, 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 like real deep history. They learn it from religion. Isn't that interesting? In uh, most schools, certainly in the United States, religion is not taught. And yet these super elite are learning religion, at least for the purpose of understanding human nature, human thinking. Now, I understand this because uh, I think that religion, many religions, have superior psychology, a superior, a better understanding of psychology than psychologists. And I'll just give you one example. Hinduism and Buddhism both, I think, are the best psychology systems in the world. I mean, beyond their religion, if you just look at the practical part, the understanding of the human mind. Hinduism and Buddhism, they had a better understanding you know, 1,500 years ago than modern psychologists. Modern psychologists don't know a lot. Buddhists and Hindus had these things understood and figured out over a 1,000 years ago. So the super elite study religion. They study philosophy, and they study literature, good classic literature. That's where they learn human nature. All right, let's go to point number two that they teach. Okay, so here we go. The second thing they teach in super elite schools. Databases. The second requirement of these schools is that every graduate have a strong experience with the act of literacies. Now, we're all familiar with literacy as some exercise in reading. But the act of literacies are writing and public speaking. Ha! The second principle of the super elite schools, of the super, super rich, is they teach active literacy. He's calling this active literacy. What is that? It's two skills. Writing and public speaking. Writing and public speaking. They teach writing and public speaking. Again, in most schools, middle schools, uh, high school, secondary schools, even universities around the world are most students taught to be excellent public speakers. No, they are not. No, they are not. And they are not taught good writing either. They're taught a kind of weird, strange, academic writing that is actually not good writing. It's the, the writing you learn in school, the writing you learn in universities is, is a weak form of writing. It's not a good form of writing. It's a school type of writing. See, he, he goes on to say that the type of speaking and writing they learn in the super elite schools is for persuasion. Again, influence and persuasion. They learn to speak persuasively, right? To speak in a way that changes people's minds, that gets people to do things. Again, it's a kind of leadership speaking. And the same for the writing, they learn to write in a way that's persuasive so they can sell things, so they can influence people. You don't learn that kind of writing in normal schools. And in normal schools, they're not teaching public speaking at all, usually. And if they do, they again, most speech classes in, in schools, they're horrible. They teach you to speak in a really boring way. That's not what the super elite are learning. 
All right, we'll listen to one more part, and then I'll just go on and talk about the rest, so we don't have to listen to the bad audio. But we'll go to the next part. Let me find it. Okay, so this is principle number three now. Number three, uh, among the curriculum themes that unite these elite private boarding schools, is insight into the major institutional forms, like our courts or our corporations or our military. Aha! This is, this is a big one. Number three, they learn insights to understanding of the major institutions. What's an institution? It means like the court system, the government, the military, the large corporations, the large companies, the banks. And see, they learn to truly understand these institutions. They learn the truth. They get the red pill, not the blue pill, not the fake lies they teach us about these things in regular schools. No, no, they learn the truth. They learn that, for example, that the banking families are the big power that control the governments and the me and own the media. They learn how the military works, the courts, the corporations, how they're controlled, who really has the power. They know the truth. Now, the rest of us, the 99.9% .9 in the regular schools, it's all lies. So they, you learn the fake stuff. You get the blue pill. All right, I'm going to do number four. I'll play number four from John Taylor Gatto, and then I'll just talk about the rest myself. All right, last one from John Taylor Gatto. Find it. There it is. Okay, here we go. The fifth thing that private schools do, or elite private boarding schools do, that public schools hardly touch are the repeated exercises in the forms of good manners and politeness. Isn't this interesting? Number four, they teach their students, the super elite students, good manners and politeness. Good manners and politeness. In other words, they teach social skills. Social skills. And then Mr. Gatto mentions how this is the opposite in public schools. In the United States, especially, the public schools are filled with rude behavior. Right? The students, the, the children are super, super rude. But in these super elite schools, no, no, no. They are taught to be very polite, to have very, very good manners, to have excellent social skills. Isn't that interesting? Now, number five, I'm going to actually I'm going to play number five because it's probably my favorite one. So let's go ahead and listen to one more from him. OK, number five. The fifth thing that private boarding schools emphasize is independent work. Think again about the possible reasons for that. In public schools as we know them, the teacher is charged with about 80 to 90 percent of the of filling the time. Ah, this is the big one. I've been talking to you about this in the Effortless English Show again and again and again and again. And you'll see why this is so important. Okay, the super elite, the billionaires, the multi-billionaires, the banking families. What do they teach their children in their schools? Independent work, independent work. They teach their children to be independent learners. He says that in public schools, right, in the normal schools, the teacher does 80 to 90 percent. I'd say at least 90 percent, 90 percent of the talking, right? 90% of the decisions are from the teacher in the, in our normal schools, in our terrible schools, right? The teacher fills 90% of the time. 90% of the time is the teacher standing up and talking and talking and talking. And so the students are passive. They become passive. They learn to obey the teacher, to always follow the teacher. They learn to not be independent. Then he says that in the super elite schools, it's exactly the opposite where the students are taught to be independent. They do 80 to 90% of the work. They are deciding. They are leading their own learning. So the teacher is more like a coach, encouraging them, supporting them. But the students in the super elite schools, 
They're pushed. They're constantly pushed to be independent, to be active, independent learners. Right? They're training them to be independent learners. They're training them to be leaders, to be successful, to be strong. That's what the super elite are training their children to be. They're trying to, tr to train you and your children to be the opposite, to be passive, to be weak, to be followers, to be obedient. Now, number six, uh, I'm not going to play anymore because of the bad sound, but I'll just, I'll read them and talk, discuss them. Number six is another very interesting one. The super elite schools teach energetic physical sports. Energetic physical sports. Now, I find this interesting because in, in America, for example, uh, they are eliminating, they are getting rid of physical sports and recess. Recess is like playtime. So in American schools, they're getting rid of that. They're forcing the children to be sitting all day indoors. They're cutting the time they have for physical play, for running around, for playing energetic physical games. But the super elite, no, 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 they're not doing that. They do the opposite. The super elite feel it's very important for their children to have energetic physical sports, even like martial arts type sports. And they learn. They learn to deal with pain and disappointment. They learn to deal with struggle. They learn to be graceful physically, to move well. See, the super elite understand that the physical and the mental are connected, and indeed, they're one. Number seven, the super elite schools teach and provide access to real-world mentors. Uh, another thing that you never find in schools, in normal schools. Access to real-world mentors. What does that mean? Well, Gatto gives the example of that in the super elite schools, the children, they connect them with, for example, CEOs, the bosses of big companies. So the children go outside of the school. They, they're not just in the school classroom all the time. No, they go out and they, they'll go to a company and they'll get to interview and talk to the CEO, right? The big boss, the big president of large corporations or to top government officials. They go out and they have internships and interviews and discussions and they have mentors out in the real world, successful leaders in different areas of life. Do we have that in normal schools? Definitely not. Point number eight. The super elite push responsibility. They teach responsibility. They encourage responsibility. What does that mean? It means at a very young age, they push their children to be more responsible, to make decisions, to do real world work. Right? That might, you know, in the, in, in, when they're very young, maybe that means they cook. They learn how to cook. When they're just, you know, five or six years old, they start helping to make a meal. They help to take care of the house. They help to, um, you know, take care of the school. And then as they get older, they get more and more and more responsibility. What do we find in normal schools? Usually the opposite. The children are prevented from having responsibility, true responsibility, truly being in charge of things. All right, number nine. In elite schools, they are taught, the children are taught to have a personal code of excellence, to develop, to create a personal code, a personal mission, a, to find their personal purpose in life. And a code of excellence. Again, do we find this in normal schools? <laughs> Definitely not. In your school, did you did you learn? Did were you helped to find your purpose in life? A, a a big meaningful purpose for your life? No. Were you taught to develop a code of excellence for all areas of your life? No. But in the elite schools, they teach that. All right, number ten. They are taught to understand and appreciate the masterpieces of music, dance, 
art, and literature. They learn about masterpieces, the masterworks of art, literature, music. Again, these subjects are being cut from American schools. Public schools in America are cutting most of these. And even if they don't cut them, art classes in America are a joke. They are a total, complete joke. They teach modern art garbage. They don't teach about the classic masterpieces. They don't teach classical skills like drawing well. You don't learn that in art school. I, I learned to draw a little bit. Not so good anymore. I haven't practiced, but I learned a bit, a basic bit of drawing from just from, again, independently buying a book. But it, I took an art class in school and I learned nothing. They also don't teach you music. See, they're learning about the, the classics of music, classical music, great music, Mozart and Beethoven and all of that stuff. Do public schools teach that? No. They're, public school kids are listening to rap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number 11, the super elite teach their children accurate observation and recording. Accurate observation and recording. They teach them to observe things in the world, to observe, to look carefully, to notice. This is a kind of meditation, really. Number 12, ah, another, this is a big one. This is John Taylor Gatto's favorite. The super elite teach their children the ability to deal with tough challenges. The ability to deal with tough challenges, tough problems. They push their kids to deal with difficult challenges in life. Not only academic challenges, not only school type challenges, but you know, public speaking, for example. So if their kid is shy, well, they push them to deal with that challenge of public speaking. Public speaking for a shy kid is very tough, but they, they teach their kids to face difficult challenges. If their kid is physically weak, then they push them in to deal with that challenge, to, to go into sports, to maybe go into wrestling, to deal with tough physical challenges so they become physically stronger. They don't say, oh, everything's okay, you're wonderful all the time, here's a trophy, even though you didn't do anything. That's what they're doing more and more in normal schools, in normal society, that's not what the super elite do. No, no, they challenge their kids. I talked about this in an earlier show, how, you know, if you look at some of the great super successful people, they were challenged. They were doing amazing things. They had huge responsibility. They faced huge challenges at very, very young ages. Remember, you know, Richard Branson, I told this story of, few weeks ago about Richard Branson, how his mom took him when he was, I think he was four, four or five years old, drove like 30 minutes away and said, do you think you can get home? Can you get home by yourself? Can you find your way home? And he said, oh, I think so. So she, she made him get out of the car and then she drove away and left him alone. And he had to find his way back home at age four or five in London, in a big city. Did she do it because she hated him? No, no, no. Because she wanted him to learn to be independent. She wanted him to be able to face difficult challenges, to face the unknown, to face fears. Now, of course, she, she was training him. You know, she was teaching him to be strong and independent. That's not what normal schools do. Uh, number 13, Gato says that the elite teach their children to be cautious, to be careful about coming to conclusions. That's an interesting one. So basically, they teach them to try to get a lot of information before they decide something is true, right? Like in in, in again in in our in our bad schools in our normal schools, children are taught just to memorize things. They to, and a lot of times they memorize lies. But in the super elite schools, children are not taught to do that. Children are taught to independently find information about a topic and then very, very carefully decide what is true and to be very careful about it and to search for as much information as possible, not just accept what people tell you. And finally, connected to this, number 14, the super elite schools teach their children to test their judgments, to constantly test their judgments. 
So again, they're taught not to just accept things, not to accept what they're told, not to be passive, but to be very active, to gather information and then make a decision, decide what they think is true, but still, even after they decide to, to test their decision in the real world, to test their idea in the real world and to see, is it really true? And then to adjust. This is kind of the Kaizen way, right? To constantly improve. So they have the idea that they're, you know, they know that they're never 100% right and true about something. They're always, always, always looking to test, test, test their ideas to make sure they're true, to make sure they're right, to make sure they have a good idea. So they're constantly improving, constantly learning, right? That's what this really is about, lifelong, constant learning and testing. So that's it. Those are the 14 points of super elite schools. You can see the super, super elite, the people who control the world, who run the world, the people with the true power, their education is totally different than the education they created for everyone else. Now, the good news is this. The good news is you can independ independently create your own elite education. You don't need to be a billionaire or come from a billionaire's family. You don't need to go to one of those super elite schools. You don't need to send your children to one of those super elite schools. It can all be done now very cheaply in your own home. Independent homeschooling is the best way. That's what John Taylor Gatto recommends. That's what I recommend. Independent homeschooling, independent learning at home. Or on your own, you can do it in a coffee shop if you prefer. But independent learning, that's the way you can create your own super elite education. So you can develop those same super elite, super successful, super powerful, super useful skills and knowledge. Leadership, the ability to persuade, great public speaking and writing, reading classics of history and literature in religion and philosophy, facing difficult challenges, pushing yourself to face difficult challenges, taking more and more responsibility, being more and more active and independent in your learning, in your life, and making your own decisions, observing and learning constantly, learning and practicing great social skills, taking the red pill, don't believe the fake news media, the big media. Don't believe it is lies. That's for, that's for the people who are not in charge. Learning the truth about the media, about movies and television and the, the news, the fake news. Learning the truth about the government and who really has power and the economy and who really has the power. Studying the masterpieces of art and music, East and West. You can do all of this yourself with an internet connection and a phone. That is what's so amazing about this time we live in now. It's so incredible. They can't control that now. They cannot keep you from that. Now, if you want to be mindless, if you want to do what everyone else is doing, if you just follow along part of the herd, bah, bah, bah. Well, then, yeah, you'll be just like everybody else, the sheep going to your crappy little school. Maybe you're out of school, just following what the media tells you. Bah, bah, bah. That's okay, but, you know, you're going to end up like everyone else then. You should learn from the super elite. There's a reason they are controlling the world. There's a reason they are billionaires and continue to control that money. There's a reason they have that leadership ability and power. Right? Learn from them. Now, you don't need to do it for power. You don't need to do it to control others. I don't care about that. I don't want to control other people. But I also do not want to be controlled. I want to be free in my mind, in my life. That's the purpose of creating your own super elite education. Because if you don't, you won't be free. So do it. Create your own super elite education at any age, right? Lifelong learning. If you're young, you can start doing it yourself. If you're older, you can do it yourself. 
Don't wait for anyone else to tell you to do it. You know what to do. Do it. All righty then. Time for gab. Gab. We're gonna go to gab. Gab time! All right, gab.ai, G-A-B dot A-I. Gab is the free speech alternative to Twitter. Twitter censors, Twitter hates free speech. I will be leaving Twitter. Goodbye, you scumbags. Goodbye. But not yet, because Gab is not open 100%. Coming soon, coming soon. But anyway, I do have followers on Gab already. So let's read some questions on Gab today. Answering questions from Gab. Gab Gab.ai. Follow me, AJ Hogue. It's just my name. Follow me on Gab at Gab.ai slash AJ Hogue. A-J-H-O-G-E. Question number one from um, Lethen H. Kong 0104. (laughs) All right. Ask, what are the rules of E.E. Strong? What are the rules of E.E. Strong? Hashtag E.E. Strong. Effortless English Strong. Okay, no rules, really. This is, ju- this is just a, uh, a fun little challenge that s- some of the Effortless English uh, fans are doing online. So it's just some of, us, some of us are interested in fitness and health. So we decided, hey, let's do a challenge together. Let's encourage each other to get stronger. So what is the E.E. Strong challenge? It's just push-ups and pull-ups. We're going to increase our push-ups and our pull-ups. So what you do is right now, you can do it today, do push-ups. See how many push-ups can you do in two minutes. There's a two-minute time limit. How many push-ups can you do without stopping? Write it down. Send it to me on Gab or on Twitter. Then do the same thing. Try pull-ups. How many pull-ups you can do any grip, pull-ups or chin-ups, either one. But how many can you do? without stopping. And again, write it down, send it to me on Twitter or Gab. That's your starting point. Our finish line is July 4th. July 4th this year, so just a few months. July 4th, American Independence Day. You're going to do it again. You're going to do your maximum number of push-ups and your maximum number of pull-ups on that day. And then we're going to see how much did we improve? How much did each of us improve? How did how much did we increase our push-ups and our pull-ups? See, strong body makes a strong mind. All right, next on Gab, next uh, comment on Gab. Ah, from Ragbir in India. Ragbir is homeschooling his two boys. They're quite amazing. They're doing amazing things, those two boys. Good example of everything we just talked about today in the show. Rugbear's comments. Homeschooling is the best. Uh, we just need, but we need to uh, support our children a little bit. Only parents can do the best. Yes, yes, yes. That's exactly right. Absolutely. Homeschooling is the best and parents are the best teachers, right? So when, with homeschooling, you become the teacher, right? But you're going to follow the elite, the super elite way of teaching. Remember, the super elite way of teaching is that the student is an independent learner. They are doing 80 to 90 percent of the decisions of the work, right? They're, they're sitting and they're reading on their own, not listening to the teacher talk, right? They're doing research themselves independently, not just doing worksheets that the teacher gives them, right? So, as the as the parent, as the teacher, a homeschooling parent or teacher, you're guiding them. You, there's different ideas about this, but you might tell them, okay, I, I, you, I want you to read this book, and then we're going to talk about it, maybe chapter by chapter. You're going to discuss it. And maybe you ask them to give a presentation, to stand up and give a presentation to you about, about the chapter that they read, right? So they're practicing some public speaking too. 
But then, so you tell them what to do. You give them the assignment, but right then, but you're not you're not reading the book to them. Then what are they doing? Well, most of the time they're sitting there quietly themselves reading. Right, independent learning. And this is what's great about homeschooling. It's actually so easy. I don't know. Parents think it's so tough. It's not. You train your kid to be independent. You you guide them towards what you think they need to learn. Most of the time with homeschooling, it's your child sitting quietly reading. Your child sitting quietly reading books. Or your child sitting quietly writing about what they read. Or occasionally your child standing and giving you a presentation about what they read or what they learned. See, all of that as the parent, as the teacher, that's all quite easy for you. You don't really have to do much. Just teach your kid to read. Once your once your child can read fairly well, they are ready to be a super independent learner. And then, as as the parent, you're just helping them develop the discipline to to do it every day for several hours. And you're also guiding them gradually towards more and more uh, deep and difficult work. And you're guiding them towards more responsibility. And you know you're giving them tips about public speaking, for example. Uh, but, but most of it is really they're doing most of the work. That is the point. You're training them to be independent learners, to be active, not passive. Also, as, as uh, independent learners with your kids, you encourage them to explore, to learn about things that they love, right? So it's not always you telling them, you must read this, and you must read this, and you must read this. That's not independent. Okay, you can do that a little bit. You know, there may be some things which you feel are very important, so, yeah, it's fine to assign uh, certain things for your child to learn or read. But mostly, your child should start looking for things they love themselves. You know, some children love, uh, I don't know, plants, let's say, or biology. So they should be reading about animals and plants themselves. They should start, they should be naturally curious, and you're just there to, to encourage them. Okay, good, read about elephants, and I want you to read that book about elephants, or read a bunch of books about elephants, and then give me a presentation. You're going to write something about elephants that you learned, and then you're going to stand up and you're going to give me a little speech. You're going to give me a presentation about, you know, the most important things you learned about elephants this week. See, as, as the teacher, as this parent, that's really easy for you. Your kid is doing the work. That's how it should be. So they are determining, they are choosing, I'd say, at least half of it themselves. And then you can also then choose some things that you feel are very important. All right. Oh, and this is a common question. One more question from Gab, gab.ai slash AJ Hogue from Muhammad Ali, not the boxer, I guess, uh, says, uh, I am studying two languages every day at a different time. What do you suggest? Should I move on? All the best. So, okay, this is, I get this question all the time. AJ, can I learn two languages at the same time? Uh, should I learn two languages at the same time? You know, there's not a right or wrong answer. I'm, I can't say yes I can't or no. It's your decision. But you just have to realize that it's just logical. Okay, it's just logic here. If you learn two languages at the same time, you will go more slowly. Each language will improve more slowly. If you focus on one language, then you'll learn faster that one language. But of course, you won't learn the other one. So, um, you know, if you have four hours every day, four hours to listen, uh, listen, and, listen to and read foreign languages. Well, if you do four hours a day of English, then you are going to improve quite quickly. But if you do two hours of English and two hours of Chinese, then your English will improve more slowly. Right? It's just because you're doing half the time. That's just how it works. So it's really up to you. It's, it's a matter of your, your priorities, right? What's most important to you? you, know, in gen if you it depends really on your life situation. Usually, generally, very generally, English is the most useful foreign language to learn, right? You, you know this because that's why you're doing it. That's why you're learning it. It's the world language of business and academics and science and travel, all of that. So you understand that, even media. So I generally recommend focus on English. Get your English to a nice high level first. 
then move to another language. That's for most people. For most. Some people, maybe they have a specific need for a different language, not English. That's fine, then, then you know that, and maybe that's more important. But for most people, generally in the world, English would be number one. Okay, then. Let's just review quickly before I go. The top 14 things that the super elite teach their children in schools. Number one, a theory of human nature. This comes from real history, religion, philosophy, and literature, classic literature. Number two, writing and public speaking for persuasion and leadership. Number three, understanding institutions, the red pill, who really has the power, how does government really work, and the banks, and the economy, and the military. Number four, good manners and politeness, social skills. Number five, independent learning, independent work. Big, important one. Number six, energetic physical sports. Number seven, access, connection with, access to, connection with, real world mentors. Number eight, responsibility, decision making. Number nine, a personal code of excellence, a personal purpose. Number 10, the masterpieces of music, art, and literature. Number 11, accurate observation and recording, to observe, to see clearly. Number 12, the ability to deal with tough challenges, tough challenges and problems, tough challenges, real world challenges. Number 13, caution, carefulness about coming to conclusions. And number 14, constantly testing their judgments, testing their decisions, testing their ideas, testing their learning, constantly testing and improving. Get out there. Be an independent learner. Create your own super elite lifelong education. And you too will join the top 0.1% in any area of life that's important to you. See you next time. Have a great day. Bye for now.